Hello and welcome to the Black Hat Bushcraft Channel. Buzzwords of the day. Social distancing. What does that mean to me? Let's go to the woods, set up a shelter, get a fire going, cook a good meal, and just relax in the safety of the woods. No viruses out here that I see. COVID free. Let's have a good time. We're going to get started on setting up camp. So the pack I'm carrying today is the Fjall Raven Greenland Top. This is the 30 liter model. And it's really a perfect size pack to carry just the essentials that you need for a trip like this. I've attached a 10 liter dry bag, which I got from Self Reliance Outfitters. And it has my shelter and my sleeping pad, my sleeping bag. Everything that I'm using today is in this pack other than my recording gear. So you can see what that looks like. Now I've just rigged that up with a couple of brass rings on the straps and attached it with a couple of children's leather belts, which I got from Walmart. Makes for cheap bedroll straps, like six bucks a piece, and it works perfect. So again, great pack for a trip like this, just a simple overnighter, just to carry the essential gear. Not a lot of extra stuff needed. Using the silky big boy saw today. This thing is a monster. Goes through wood very quickly. Need to collect some poles for tripod. Also like to have a little baton in camp. So the shelter that I'm going to be sleeping in tonight is the TP Nova by One Tigress. And while it's called a two-man shelter, I've always been glad that it was just me sleeping in it in the times that I've had it set up. Uh, there's two options as far as setting this thing up. One, you can support it from the inside with a center pole, such as a trekking pole. And number two, you can set it up and hang it from either a tree limb or a tripod. So that's why I've collected these poles here is because I'm going to build a tripod, a really tall tripod that I can support this teepee from. And uh, it'll give me more space on the inside. So let's lash this tripod so I can get the shelter set up. All right, so you can see these three poles aren't exactly the same diameter, but that's okay. They're cut to length. So it should work. This tripod doesn't have to support a whole lot of weight. And to lash my tripod, I'm going to be a little unconventional with this today. I'm going to tie a simple bowling knot and just make a loop, go back through the loop, around the standing line, and back through the loop. I have a video on how to tie this in detail if you're not sure or if you want to learn how to do that. It's one that in the Pathfinder system we use so much. And to start this out, what I'm going to do is uh, just take my hank of cordage right here and just run it back through this loop here. And that'll give me a nice start on my tripod. And it'll be a quick release so that I can reclaim this bank line after I lash. Now from here, what I'm gonna do is just simply go around my poles. And I'm gonna go around five times, trying to keep it tight. This doesn't have to be like super perfect or anything, because again, I'm just hanging a small teepee from it. So it's not really going to bear a whole lot of weight. I just come around here, wrapping five times. And I want to try to keep things nice and neat as I go around. And I'm keeping tension on this as I wrap. Keeping my wraps nice and tight against each other. All right, that'll be number five right there. Okay, now from there, I'm going to start my frap. To do that, I'm going to slide everything forward. Just using this uh, convenient piece of grapevine here 
to support this off the ground. Now for my frapping, what I'm going to do is come back between these poles and create that tension to help hold everything together a little better. Just like that. And normally we do five wraps and three fraps. But it's not a perfect science. As long as it's tight, that's all that really matters with this type of thing. So sometimes we get caught up in being textbook perfect, but that really doesn't matter. As long as it functions, that's all that matters. Good, it's nice and tight. Give it another frap here. <clears throat> so this one's really tight, so I'm just using a toggle here to help get some leverage. Keep from tearing up my hands with this bank line. Come back through one more time. Just feed that line through between here. Grab hold of that line with a toggle, just like this. Just wrap it a couple times, it gives you a T-handle, and pull that thing nice and tight. It's looking pretty good to me. Give it one last tug, make sure everything's nice and tight. <clears throat> that looks good. I'm going to finish all of this off with a clove hitch. So we're going to create an X. Feed that right down between there. Now I just feed this back through the middle of that X. And now I can pull all of that down nice and tight. That makes it nice and neat. Now just to make sure that my hitch doesn't come undone, I just tie a security knot right here at the very end. And that's perfect. I have just a little bank line left over. No problem with that. looks pretty good and this little bit of bank line hanging down will give me a place to toggle off my shelter I think that's gonna work I think it'll hold up a teepee So I brought myself just a cheap poly tarp to use as a moisture barrier. It'll also kind of help out in case there's anything sharp underneath the TP. Just kind of help from puncturing it. The floor is very waterproof, so I'm not too worried about that as far as moisture getting in. This is a pretty simple shelter to set up. It's just a lot of stakes that you have to drive in the ground. I guess the pro side of that is it makes a very secure shelter. All right, so the first step is to stake out these front two corners here. I'm just gonna stake them out at a 45 degree angle. The ground is very soft here where it's been raining so much. You don't want to over tighten this thing when you're pulling it out. I'm going to stake out this back corner over here. Okay. There's another corner here. And we've got one more over here on the opposite side. The ground's so soft I can drive the stakes with just my hand. Alright, so the next step of this is to run my cordage through this loop. 
That way I can raise up the top of my teepee. And then all I have to do is just toggle that off. Very simple. And now that can't slide back through. Now the cool thing here is this is, can be adjusted for height by simply raising up the tripod. And I can adjust that. I need to get my guy lines run out first. Though. All right, from here, I'm gonna pull out this little vestibule. That's one of my favorite parts of this particular shelter. It also has a guy line right here to help pull this out. Give you a little bit more space on the inside. All right, and I have guy lines on the sides. Cool thing about these guy lines is they're reflective. So when you're walking around camp, if you have your headlight on, it'll help reflect the light off. And of course, we don't want anything sticking out from underneath the shelter. If it did rain, which is not supposed to rain anymore this afternoon, that could become a problem. Well now, in society, a lot of people are having a TP crisis, but out here in the woods, my TP is good to go. So I want to go ahead and get my sleeping gear in place. This is the Ecotech Hibernate sleeping mat. Very easy to inflate this thing. Just unroll it. It's a little valve right here on the back. Open that up. Just easy to inflate. That should do it. Just throw this in here. Just for some extra comfort, I brought just a little fleece throw. This is like a $4 thing that I picked up at Walmart, and I'll use it as a ground cloth in here. All right, and the last thing I have here is my sleeping bag. This is a REI sleeping bag. You just have it in a really good waterproof bag one is C to Summit, I believe. Yeah, C to Summit. Nice lightweight stuff sack, waterproof. When you're dealing with the down sleeping bag, you gotta, you gotta pack it waterproof. You don't want that thing to get wet. Here's a better look at the label for that. I've really been pleased with this. It's a lightweight stuff sack that really compresses this bag down. And with a down bag when you're camping, it's good to go ahead and lay that thing out early so it can start to kind of fluff up. Because you want that dead air space with that down. So you don't want to wait until it's time to go to bed to fluff this thing up. And a lot of times I use traditional gear, but this, uh, this is really nice having this lightweight system that I can use as well. And this is the model for my sleeping bag. I've taken this one uh, over to Sweden for a camping trip and I've used it quite a few times in my hammock and it's been a really good bag so I'm very pleased with that one for the money it was a, it was a good buy I caught it on a good sale and again I've really enjoyed that all right so you guys can see what it looks like inside the TP this is just inside the vestibule here it's a place for her boots and then on the inside there you can see I've got my pad down with my bag on it should be just enough space for me and my essential gear. Should be a comfortable night's sleep. All right, so now I need fire materials. I need wood to burn, I need kindling, and I definitely need something for ignition, such as some fat wood, tulip poplar bark. See what we can find. Oh yeah, I found a jewel right here. Dead standing oak tree. Perfect diameter. That's a lot of wood right there. I can easily cut this stuff with that silky big boy. 
and this will give me enough wood for the whole night. Great find. Very happy about that. Timber. In town, all the gyms may be closed, but in the woods, there's always a workout to be had. So I spotted this really close to my camp. And uh, to me, this looks like it's gonna have quite a bit of fat wood in it. I'm just gonna use my saw to cut in. And there's definitely some fat wood in that. Oh yeah, smells good. It's not the best quality stuff that we have around here, but. However, should do the job. And I have plenty of this, so I'm not gonna use it sparingly in getting my fire started. I'm gonna cut just a little bit further up and see that gives me any better quality yeah there we go that's some good stuff right there that's enough to get a fire going for sure score so what I have here is just a simple pillowcase just have a little jam knot on it keep it compressed in my pack and with that now I can go and collect kindling AKA Smalls, if you've ever been to the Pathfinder School. All right, well, you guys didn't see a whole lot of this work, but I should be good to go with firewood for tonight. That's like 10 feet long. Most of that stuff is three, four inches in diameter, and it's dead standing oak. So that'll be good quality firewood. Got me a nice bag full of small kindling. Got my fat wood, which I'm about to process. Got me a pile of medium sticks. I'm gonna be good to go. It's time to get after this fire. I'm hungry and I'm ready to start cooking. Split into this fat wood just a little bit. See what I got to work with. Boy, that's beautiful. This is a new knife for me. This is the Kephart XL, five inch version. And that's some tough stuff right there. And this is uh, my second outing with this knife. So, so far I'm pleased with it. It is razor sharp. Got me a little piece of tulip poplar bark here. I'm just gonna use that as a catch for this fat wood. It comes to batoning, I think sometimes people get carried away a little bit. They feel as if their knife is indestructible. I prefer to be a little more careful with mine. Even if the knife can handle it, there's no sense in beating your knife if you don't have to. If you can hit it just nice and soft and tap your way through, that's always a better choice than just testing your knife to see how far you can push it. Those bigger pieces like that will burn for a longer period and help get my kindling started, ignited. That looks pretty good to me. I think that'll do the job. All right, so I got my six inch by half inch ferro rod. See if I can ignite this fat wood. I'm 
that's the dirtiest thing I've ever seen. That stuff has a strong smell, but it's not igniting. So I had to run back out. Unfortunately, I found a little bit of dry tulip poplar bark, semi-dry at least. And I've been processing it for the last couple of minutes just to break it down some. Hopefully with a ferro rod, I won't have to have it too perfect. That is the darndest thing. I have never seen fatwood not light with a ferro rod. And that just goes to show that no matter how much you do this and how many times you successfully make fire, never take it for granted because sometimes it stumps you. I never would have expected that problem today. Never would have expected that, considering I had that fat wood. I am not happy about that. Either way, I'll make it work, but I did not like having to go back out and get more materials after the fact. But there's always a lesson to be learned in the woods. Never take it for granted. That's also a good lesson that never count on one thing. I counted on that fat wood and it didn't come through. Either way, I think I'm going to have a good fire at this point. All right, so I'm hoping to cook up a nice bush pot meal. Maybe a Mexican inspired dish here. This is the titanium bush pot from Self Reliance Outfitters. This will be my third time using this pot. I really like it so far. And it's nice lightweight option compared to the other bush pot, the stainless one. This one's a little bit smaller and definitely a lot lighter. So I need to process up my foods here. I'm gonna work on this bell pepper. And to process the bell pepper, I'm going to be using my Swiss Army knife. This is the Forester model. Really like this one. It's become my favorite knife, folding knife for the woods. And because of the Swiss Army knives being stainless, I like using them for food prep. If I'm carrying like a carbon steel knife, such as the Kephart, which I just processed fat with, with and I don't particularly want to process my food with that. At this point, I could obviously clean my knife up, but this one's in my pocket, stainless, uh, just perfect for these types of chores. And of course, these little Swiss Army knives are razor sharp. So I really enjoy using them for food prep. So this meal's gonna have that Mexican rice, and I'm gonna throw some seasoning in it, I'm going to use summer sausage for the meat, and the reason I'm using that is because it doesn't have to be refrigerated. Got my pepper process down nice. Just add that into the bush pot. Mm. Love the taste of some bell pepper. It's good stuff. And this plate that I processed this down on is just a Kapilka platter love that thing it's a great uh it's a comfort item but it's a great thing to have in camp when you're doing stuff like this all right this is the summer sausage again the reason i like using this stuff is because it is you know a cured out meat it's fully cooked and the nice thing about it is it doesn't have to be refrigerated so i can bring it out in my pack and uh it's something you can just carry in your pack really keep it out at all times in your pack 
as a protein source. It's got a good flavor to it. So it'll be a good addition to my bush pot meal. I'm gonna peel that wrapper off this stuff. Now I'm just gonna cube that up a little bit. Again, that'll add some good flavor to my meal. Give me a good source of protein at the same time. Just add that stuff into the pot here. I'm going to just cover this stuff up with some rice. I don't need too much of that. And then what I'll do is just cover it all up with water. It's about half a pack, three quarters of a pack. Just cover it all. And now I'm just going to fill the rest of the pot up with water. You can see all the way up about half an inch from the rim. And now I just need to get this on the fire. Now I just have a stretch of paracord here and a little toggle. I'm just going to take a bite in that, make a locking lark's head. Like that. Just cinch that thing down until that overhand knot bites against it. I have a bowling loop at this end. And with that, now I can just simply slide that over top of my crossbar. Now, I've got my bush pot here. I'm going to run this toggle through the bell. Just like that. Now I can bring that pot up here. And I'm simply going to pull the cordage over top of this toggle. And that's going to give me an adjustable system here. So that I can get my pot over the fire. Nice thing is about this is I can go horizontally, side to side. But also because of this toggle, I can slip this and make it go down towards the fire to get closer to the coals or I can drag it and bring it up higher off the coals. I'm going to work on building this fire up just a little bit. Technically I'm cooking at this point. Well, the sun has set on another day. Once again, I'm sitting by a fire waiting on a bush pot meal. I don't mind waiting on bush pot meals. It's always a pleasure. And I say this good fire is in spite of that crummy fat wood. I have never seen fat wood that smelled good, looked good, and would not strike with a ferro rod. I guess you learn something new every day. Never take a fire for granted. I hear my food starting to sizzle, and I'm looking forward to a hot meal. Oh man, that looks really good. I think it's ready. Rice looks ready. Peppers are soft. And that's going to be some good food right there. Alright, it is time to eat finally. This food looks so good. Of course, anytime you cook in camp after a hard day's work of setting up shelter, processing firewood, hiking around, a hot meal like this on a cold evening is always welcome. I believe I'll have some of this left over for tomorrow morning. Ah, I lost a piece of pepper. Not to tease you guys at home, but man, that's some good looking food right there. This is going to be a good meal. All right, well, it's finally time to eat. Got to give thanks always. And I am very thankful to be here right now, enjoying this fire and a nice hot meal. Hope you guys have eaten well. Because unfortunately, can't share it. It's real good. I brought that seasoning 
I've been wanting to try that stuff, but to be honest with you, this has so much flavor, I don't want to mess that up. This doesn't need anything. Well, I don't want to keep eating in front of you guys, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this up. And uh, just relax here by the fire for a while, try to hydrate well. Uh, not being in a hammock, it won't be hard to get up and use the bathroom in the middle of, of the night. I'm so used to hammock camping at this point. It'd be nice, easy in and out with that teepee. Anyway, I'm going to finish up and I'll talk to you guys again before I hit the hay. Well, I've had a nice dinner. I've sat by the fire for a while, relaxed. I'm starting to get a little sleepy now, so I think I'm going to get into TP, get comfortable, see if I can get some sleep. Let's get in here and get comfortable. All right, so I'm inside my TP. Whenever I get ready for bed at night, especially in cold weather, I'm supposed to get down to the high 30s tonight, I like to put on fresh, dry socks because I've been working all day in these and my feet are moist so it's always a good idea to either one if you're sleeping in a good sleeping bag you can just take your socks off or two it's always a good idea to put on fresh socks if you want to wear socks key is to have loose socks you don't want tight stuff up around your ankle because that will just restrict the blood flow so a lot of times i've had people ask me you know about getting your feet cold at night in a hammock but that's one of the key things is fresh socks, dry socks, and loose socks, or no socks if you got a good bag. Of course, I put my beanie on. It helps retain some heat up top. And another thing I like to do is I like to take off my work pants, so the pants that I've been wearing all day, and I'll put on my minus 33 wool base layer. So I'm gonna put that on. And uh, that way, any moisture that's in my clothes from sweating earlier, moving firewood and so forth, that takes care of that problem. My bag is nice and fluffy at this point. I've got that thing all fluffed up. I've got this nice pad. The pad was recommended to me by my buddy and fellow instructor Sean Kelly of Corporal's Corner. So I actually saw him using this pad, and so I thought I'd give it a try, and I'm glad I did. I've slept on it a couple of times now, and I really like it. It's a good pad. With all that, I think it's time to snuggle up and get some sleep. It's about 10.50 p.m., so fire is going good. Uh, so hopefully I'll have some coals in the morning. I think I'm going to go ahead and get ready to turn in. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me tonight, virtually. And uh, I look forward to the morning. In the morning when the sun comes up, first cracks the sky. It's one of my favorite times in the woods. You can hear the birds singing their song. So I look forward to that and a hot cup of coffee first thing in the morning. So thank you guys for your time and uh, I'll see you soon. Good night. One last view of the fire from the teepee. It's a nice view to drift off to sleep to. Good morning, 6.30, bright and early. Birds are in full swing. It's gotten cold out here, upper 30s. I guess it's time to get up, shoot up a couple of armored columns. Early bird gets the worm. It's coffee time. Let's make it happen. We burned through a lot of wood last night. Still got some coals here. Not a lot though.
have to work on that. all those big logs back together. Give a little oxygen and away they go. Multifunctional seat cushion. This thing's awesome. Ah, much better morning fire is always welcome i think that's one of the highlights of camping overnight in the woods is waking up in the morning hearing those birds getting that warm fire going of course that cup of coffee was just to come but always a welcome sight and if you plan properly your fire from the day before should always provide you with your next fire yesterday's fire gives me today's fire just a little pre-position of some resources making sure that I put some big wood on last night that gave me coals, lasting coals for the morning. Day two fire is always the easiest. Well, time to start working on coffee. So for the last couple of years, 95% of my camping has been done in a hammock, four seasons. And I have to say, it's kind of spoiled me. I have a couple of little back issues that I struggle with and sleeping on the ground last night did not do me any favors. That uh, Ecotec Hibernate mat is really good. It did a great job of battling uh, conduction from the ground. I mean, I never felt cold on the ground at all. Even though this ground is very wet and it was cold, uh, I had no problems with the conduction. But just the padding, just being comfortable, laying on the ground just don't cut it anymore. So I can tell I'll be a lifelong hammock camper for sure. It's a good, good mat, no doubt, but being in a hammock beats being on the ground any day for me. Whenever we think about our shelter and bedding system, we have to consider three different categories as far as keeping our body's core temperature regulated, and that's conduction, convection, and radiation. 
one area that this type of shelter definitely has as an advantage is in the area of convection that is the wind blowing being completely enclosed inside this teepee last night where that cold breeze was blowing uh, i didn't have a problem with that because i was completely enclosed inside of the teepee so that cold wind didn't blow against me and it didn't uh, cool my body's uh, temperature didn't blow away my heat so forth um, being in a hammock that definitely is much more of an issue um, however I'm more comfortable in the hammock um, but I have to deal with that convection issue more so uh, conduction could be more of an issue here laying on the cold ground but that mat did a really good job of battling that so it was very effective in that area being in an open shelter I could take more advantage of the radiation from the fire being in this type of shelter I have to be further away from the fire so I couldn't take advantage of radiation for every shelter that you set up or sleep in you have to consider those three factors and certain shelters are gonna have pros and cons depending being in this I have to be away from the fire so I can't advance take the advantage of the radiation open tarp shelter close to the fire take advantage of the radiation but also may suffer more from convection from cold breeze and things like that so all pros and cons for me hammock still is the most comfortable all right let's brew up some coffee a little stout this morning what I have here is just a jet boil coffee press and it actually perfectly fits the Pathfinder cup and there is a Facebook group called the Pathfinder Learning Center and there was a gentleman who posted this idea up there recently and uh, I do not remember his name I apologize but it was a great idea is that press perfectly fits in this cup so I'm gonna let that coffee brew up for just a minute and then I can press all the grinds out it's a very minimal piece of kit to carry I'm already carrying the cup and that allows me to create a coffee press from my cup we'll let that brew for just a minute one other idea I wanted to throw out was the way that I ran my firewood last night if you noticed I had pieces that were 8 to 10 feet in length and what I would do is just bring about six pieces together and intersect here in the center. My fire would burn in the center. As my wood would burn down, I'd just refuel the fire by sliding those logs inward. That method works really good, and it saved me from having to saw through all of that seasoned oak to cut it to length. So it's a nice way just to slide that stuff into the fire, refuel. Saves you a lot of time and effort. Works perfect. I think my coffee should be about ready. Strain that out. Looks and smells delicious. Got a little sugar here. A touch of creamer cheers <sighs> always good to have that cup of coffee first thing in the morning fires doing a good job of warming me on the outside Coffee does a good job of warming me on the inside. Well guys, I guess I need to start wrapping up this video. Uh, I have to head back into the real world pretty quick here. and to pack all this stuff up. Although my business is closed, the work didn't go away. It just changed the method in which I have to do that work. And it allows me a little flexibility in my schedule, which allowed me to come out and do this trip but I still need to get back. I'll have to work extra hard to make up for this time. But anyhow, uh, it's been nice to get out here and just kind of reconnect with nature, refresh, breathe the fresh air, the virus-free air, and uh, just kind of refresh myself. That'll hopefully make me a better me when I get back. 
anyhow I hope that you guys are doing well I hope that you're safe and healthy and I hope that if you have some extra time during this period uh, maybe you can get out and enjoy nature if that's your thing maybe do an overnighter or, or spend some time in the woods get some fresh air enjoy time with your family whatever it is that recharges you I hope you get the opportunity to do that also, I wanted to let you guys know that I do now have a Teespring store which is attached to my channel. I've had requests over the last year or more for t-shirts and stickers and merchandise. And so the Teespring store is a way that I can make that available. And uh, so I've set that up for you guys. There's some t-shirts, stickers, coffee mugs, things like that. I've tried to keep the prices low, so uh, I'm not really trying to make a lot of money off of that, but rather just make those products available for those that are interested. So if you are interested, it's down below, check it out. Also, if you're interested in some of the equipment that you've seen me use during this outing, such as my TP or my backpack, cooking gear, most of those items can be found at either my Amazon storefront or my Self-Reliance Outfitters Influencer page. And both of those are linked down below in the description box. So if you take a look at those pages, you can find where you can purchase all of these different items if you're interested in doing that. Well, I'd like to thank you guys for your time and interest. I appreciate all of your support, your kind words. Again, I hope you guys are doing well. I look forward to talking to you with another video again very soon. And until the next one, you guys take care, be safe, God bless. Anybody want leftovers? No? I guess I'll eat it for lunch then. Can't say I didn't offer. <laughs>